opinions, viewpoints, and beliefs presented on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the management, the affiliates, and broadcast partners, or the sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. And welcome to Scarefest Radio. Oh, the things that go on backstage. I just, I, I just, it, it is so much fun around here. I want to welcome everybody to the show. Uh, original broadcast date is July 27th, 2018. In our run-up to Scarefest 11. Scarefest XI. Scarefest Rebirth. Scarefest Scare 2018. Our, uh, our special guest tonight, okay, everybody, we got so much stuff going on tonight. We didn't even need guests, but because we are Scarefest Radio and we like to just take everything and just shove it right over the top, we have Chris Smith and Mike Goncalves. Is it Goncalves? I honestly don't even know how to say your last name. That'll work. Goncalves. Is it gone? Gon- okay, it is Gonzalez. Okay, yeah, Gonzalez. Yes. I uh, yeah. well, see. Okay, well, the the dude over on Ghost Hunters, he won't say his that way. So okay, I've got it now. Besides, I won't have to say your last name anymore. Tennessee Wraith Chasers, of course, is who they are. They've got some stuff to talk about tonight. Um, we've got now, 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 everybody for tonight's eye candy. We have the lovely and talented Nicole Griffith. Hi, Nicole. Oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and of course, if you didn't know, Nicole actually lives in uh, the Cincinnati Zoo. Now, um, here's what we got going on tonight, people. We're going to try to fit this in. Uh, I hope their cell phone or whatever uh, the boys are using, their battery don't go dead. Cause it's going to be tough fitting it in one hour, I'm going to tell you. We have three, three and a half. Three and a half celebrity announcements. Three and a half. Um, we have we have some stuff on sale that's went on sale on the website that is kind of a scoop because if you didn't go to the website, thescarefest.com, you probably don't even know it's on sale yet because FML. Um, and uh, let's see. We're going to be... Okay, now. We are giving away... We'll do it at about the 30-minute mark. We are giving away a Ghost Hunt Weekends ticket with, uh, I guess it's with you guys, and it's, MC. Yeah. oh, and, and the other, the other person that um, taught me how to say that last name, yep. uh, that's Old Spalding Jail, correct? Old Spalding, yeah, Old Spalding, yeah. Old Paulding. Yeah. Paulding. Yeah. Old Paulding Jail, I, yeah, you know, if you want professional They'll have to pay me more. Okay. Um, so, I think we've got all the uh, the, the BS out of the way. Oh, ever, oh, now, we'll do that on Twitter. By the way, everybody, we're going to do that on Twitter tonight with a hashtag because um, we couldn't figure out where we could do it where it would, the most people would have access. So, you, you will need to hit us with a hashtag on Twitter. Um, let's just go ahead. Uh, Tennessee Wraith Chasers, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us, brother. We're, it's a pleasure, as always. Yeah, I love those shirts. <laughs> yes, yes, they came dressed for the occasion. Now, um, <laughs> before we go any further, since we're on the topic of shirts, Nicole, tell us your cute shirt story <laughs> about <laughs> about the Wraith Chasers. Oh, it was ridiculous. So, we went to this uh, con called Mama Ruby's Mystic Holistic Fair in Owensboro, Kentucky, and um, owned by uh, Layla and Bev, uh, who have Mystical Fair. And I gave everybody shirts that, you know, I knew that was there. And I was like, hey, I have a shirt, I have a shirt, I have a shirt. And we were selling them for like five bucks anyway. 
But the next day, those two guys, who everybody like pawns over when they come, they're like, oh, they're so beautiful. And like, they all talk about them, but I'm working so much that I've never actually met them. And I met them before this, but then they walked down to my booth in the <coughs> shirts, my convention, and they have these, you know, like biceps and all this stuff. And my husband's standing next to me. And when they walked up, I had a few cocktails, and I was like, oh my God. And like the, the red, you know, the top of my head. I was just like, oh my God. And then those two were standing there, and I was like, it wasn't even like I was hitting on them or anything, but I was like, they're wearing my logo. It's so beautiful on the <laughs> And I was just like, oh my God. And Brandon's look at me like, really? <laughs> I was, and he did it in a joking way, and he knew that I wasn't really like, like gonna go for it. But I was just like, <gasps> so I fangirl over somebody I would, you know, like I've known for a year, and um, it was embarrassing. So, <laughs> so it looked really great in those shirts, and they ordered them two sizes too small, of course. So. <laughs> I told them today that I was going to put on bronzers so that it makes it white because I'm on the show. I could, uh, yeah, I probably got a filter for that somewhere. I could probably, like, you know, filter your image and I could, I could make, make, it, make you look like sepia toned. We could do, we could do sepia toned. Um, now, everybody, Tennessee Rave Chasers, uh, Chris and Mike, and of course, you know them from Ghost Asylum. Then they did a little thing on Haunted Towns. Now, first thing right out of the uh, gate, let's hear about your new show that's coming out. It's called something like live paint peeling or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, well, you know, you never know. That's how it is whenever you're investigating the paranormal. Sometimes it's active, sometimes it's not. So this is going to be a kind of an experimental thing. Uh, but hopefully uh, we'll get some, some good activity. But uh, it's fully live, fully uh, interactive. We're going to start this fall. We're going to go to uh, the most haunted places that we can find here in the South. Uh, and it's going to be an hour-long, basically, live show. You know, you've seen the live shows, Exorcism Live, Ghost Adventures have done uh, some some live uh, specials, Ghost Hunters. Right. But this is going to be like a 10-episode series of nothing but live episodes for 10 consecutive weeks. So it's never been done before, this genre. I mean, I would lie <laughs> if, I, if I said that there's not going to be any kinks, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, did it occur to you, well, there's a reason it's not been done before? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, it's just like anything else. Uh, we're very excited to bring it to the world, and, and we're so blessed that uh, the Travel Channel uh, has enough faith in us to, to try and, and go after this type of big uh, project. Uh, but, man, I mean, there's just there, there's so many things that can happen live. <laughs> You're just going to have to tune in and find out. Well, that and I, uh, as hey, a, I said, do you want to? What? I'm sorry. I, I want to talk about at some point tonight the um, Ghost Hunt Weekends thing that they did with Air Light and all of the crazy things that happened because that was not recorded. But that was like you were screaming and talking in tongues, and it was wild. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good thing she, never, it's a good thing she owns the something. convention. That's all I can say. Yeah. Um, uh, on the new show, well, we will get to Inner Light uh, because I understand that was a really, really good ghost hunt that the gentleman led. Um, anyway, the, the, having been a ghost hunter, I know how many things happened because we would set up recorders around the building, of course, and your, you know, video. So, in other words, the good stuff usually happened when we weren't even in the room, A, and B, um, what... Let me ask you this way. Is this something... Are you going to just, like, get everything set up and then flick on the cameras and hope shit happens? Or are you going to, like, investigate a while and then just kind of merge the show in with an ongoing investigation? Oh, uh, go ahead. I don't even think we we know yet, right? I mean, it's kind of going in fresh. I don't think... Uh, I don't even... I, I'm not even going to say anything because I, I don't know... We don't know yet. Okay. So, yeah. I did. I'll it's put kind it. of like the the Marvel Cinematic Universe. If we say something that like they'll send snipers to kill us and our families. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I learned from working with a lot of celebrities 
is that when you do a show that is sort of like a reality-based show, um, you don't always have total creative direction. Is that true? Oh, absolutely. Um, that's what uh, has always been great about our production company, Tremendous. Uh, you know, uh, in collaboration with Destination America, Discovery, Travel Channel, they usually just kind of give us the reins. I mean, obviously, they, they tell you the do's and do nots, but uh, they kind of trust us in a way. And, you know, we just get to kind of go in there and do what we love to do and do it the way we like to do it. And, uh, you know, they must have a little faith in us if they're saying, OK, here's a live show. Uh, you guys just continue doing what you're doing. So, I mean, that speaks, uh, you know, that speaks levels to me. So let's just uh, let's hope for the best and, and see what, what happens. <laughs> yeah, but well, you know, out there, I know they're not listening, but um, I've met you in person and you're you do some funny stuff and you say some funny stuff. And I bet that's Ed and Dow, you know, I, I bet it is because um, you guys are hilarious in person and you all, you know, some of the show wants to taken in the more serious direction and I bet that the, some of that funniness is taken away so I hope that you know they let some of that come through more and um well I could answer that see okay cued in cued in on what the gentleman just said normally normally uh the production company has a lot of creative control but if they're just going to turn on the cameras with you guys in a haunted building I'd say you have creative control at that point Yep, exactly. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing or what. Well, Nicole, Nicole's been on, well, you said two ghost hunts with us. And, I mean, it's fun. anything goes, you know, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Well, okay. I've met a lot of people that are very serious in the ghost hunting in the last uh, two years. And they um, sometimes take themselves so seriously that, that it's like any human. So it's, it's refreshing um, to, to have some of the funniness that maybe not, that doesn't get on TV, that you're like, oh my gosh, somebody just did this and it doesn't make it on the air. So I think that stuff's fun too. So it's not always so scary and serious like it's funny too. So. Yeah, well, I mean, it's very, I think it's very important to have a sense of humor, especially in this field, because there you're in a field where there's so many questions and no answer, like literally. Uh, you know, we all have uh, theories about what it is that we're investigating. Uh, there's really no factual evidence to it. Um, so it's like you can't take it too seriously, uh, but you have to have passion, I feel like. There's a, there's a fine line there. So you're passionate about it, but you can't be too uh, factual or serious about something that you don't really know the answers to. So we kind of always say that we take what we do seriously. We just don't take ourselves at all seriously so i think that's kind of a healthy way to look at this i agree um and of course <laughs> because, because you're doing it live it's obvious that uh you can't um share with us where you're gonna be but 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 i just want to know did anybody on the team happen to notice that when they said oh we're looking for locations that a certain Scarefest Radio host posted a very, very good location in Cynthiana, Kentucky. And they're silent. Okay. No. <laughs> no I thought you were going to keep going. In what, Kentucky? Uh, Cynthiana, Cynthiana, Kentucky. Ross Opera House. That's the one I'm pushing you for. So, um. What? Well, and, you, and you added it on that post, right? Yes, I did. All right. Well, that's getting looked over for sure. Like, yeah. actually. But did you call them? Don't, don't put the camera on me, but did you call them and say, will you let us do this year? Because I have called 30 or 40 locations for Lexington this year, and, and nobody wants to let you do it. It's a problem. Well, if you don't you mind. Want if the locations, they won't let you in. If for one of the Scarefest ghost hunts, you actually don't mind loading everybody up and hauling them for about 45 minutes, I can get you a place, I'm fairly sure. I just don't know any place to let. I have never ghost hunted in, Le in city proper of Lexington, Kentucky, I don't guess. Not a single time. Well, well as, as these guys found out, like, there's, you know, my work is where they don't, oh, don't put on me. But where, where <laughs> I work is extremely haunted. I know it. I work every day. But there are 
beautiful and wonderful places haunted, like Bell Breezy's houses, like their brothels that are the most famous madam of all time in Lexington, Kentucky. She was um, the madam that was, um, you know, uh, uh, the land or whatever, that was, that was based on. Like, there are all these John Hunt Morgan houses and Henry Clay homes and different um, homes that are extremely haunted and known to be haunted, and they won't let you in. And then on top of that, it's on all their land. So all these giant historic houses are built on their land, and I've gone to parties in them. I've gone to things in college. I've had friends that lived in them. You know, I've experienced all these big ghosts, but nobody will let you in. Well, and so it's hard to find a place to go time. Ghosts stomp around the cemetery. That's what everybody else does. Everybody, we got to take our first commercial break. When we come back from the commercial break, we will have our first guest announcement. You're, yep. you're watching Scarefest Radio. Do you feel lost in life? Do you seem to be stuck in emotions that are not yours? Is your home not the sanctuary it should be? Contact Spirit Mechanics where they take a team approach to your metaphysical and spiritual problems. Spirit Mechanic specializes in aura cleansing, stone attunement, attachment removal, and house cleansings. Spirit Mechanics tailors their approach to your individual spiritual path and needs. Find them every month at Lexington, Kentucky's Mystical Fair, mysticalfairlex.com, or on Facebook by searching Spirit Mechanics, that's M-E-C-H-A-N-I-X. Spirit Mechanics, for your spiritual health and well-being. Okay, everybody, um, during the commercial, the video, apparently some people are still listening on radio because we realized we didn't have the the radio muted as far as um, Skype and everything. So you got to hear them talking over the, the ads. Sorry, video is the important part anyway. So um, now that that's out of the way. Uh, uh, <laughs> now, now, on, on to, on to, on to our celebrity announcements. You know him, you love him. You've been asking. For, somebody has been asking for him every god dang day. 
in the uh, Scarefest group. Mr. Rick McCollum. Rick McCollum. Uh, of course, uh, what's that? Backwards. Backwards? Oh. Is it backwards? It's backwards to us, too. Maybe it's forwards to you, but... That's it's going it's going correctly to the people that matter. Jeez, okay, people. Cool. Have, have, have you never taken a selfie before? Anyway, Rick McCollum. Uh, it looks right on my screen, so screw everybody if it's wrong. Um, <laughs> and, and, of yeah. course, now you realize by getting Mr. Rick McCollum, Hollywood Ghost Hunters, is we, we got a complete set now. It's like having all the, the, the Wendy's glasses. We have we have the Hollywood Ghost Hunters. So um so there's our first celebrity announcement. Um so now we were yeah, I tell you what, I'm gonna turn it over to Nicole man, because Nicole, you were asking before when you so rudely interrupted us about the Inner Light Festival ghost hunt. That seemed like it was a rocking good time. Yeah, that well. I'm going to have to defer back to you guys, but so I work in a place um, that serves adults with intellectual disabilities, and uh, since Brandon and I bought it, we also give out a bunch of tickets to all of our, our people that we work with, but um, it's kind of a genre that um, draws people with disabilities and people work with because their lives are troubled, and occasionally um, something happens and they pass away in the facility and we've had a couple pass away in this facility because it's been in business for 32 years and um, they go sent there and when Layla picked that venue for inner light I said okay I mean yeah it's haunted but it's just this place and it's kind of I've dressed it up to be really pretty and um, it's like it's haunted but I don't know what they're going to get out of this so you want creepy or anything else well, the guys can tell you from there on what happened, but there was, I went to Walmart to this father's day, and I was like, I'm going to get my dad's gift, and I haven't finished buying it. Now I left the ghost hunt for like 30 minutes, and I came back, and there were people like running out the door, and all these things happening. It was just like, I walked into an insane key after I did my introduction, and here's what this place is, and Here's what we do here, and this is what it is. And, okay, guys, have fun in your dress hunt. And I was like, I'll go for 30 minutes and grab my dad some extra socks and some aqua velva. And I was like, okay, I'll be right back. And I came back to people like really finding true things in our ghost hunt. So, guys, you want to tell what you found? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was a crazy night. Um, as the night went on, I mean, I didn't even break, break out any equipment. It was, um, I mean, everything we were hearing voices and, you know, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> just text messages coming <laughs> That's in. what that was. Okay. But, um, out of anything I've ever been on, I've never seen more people get affected themselves personally than there. Um, we had a couple people that were psychics and, you know, sensitive and stuff. So of course they felt stuff, but I, I mean, at least five or six people walked out. They were all sick. <laughs> um, she physically got pushed over into boxes. Well, thank God it was cardboard boxes or whatever was in the corner it was dark. But um, something physically pushed her over, and she was in tears. But it was, out of my experiences, the most active physically with people, um, whether it's affecting them by being sick, just feeling just sad and emotional and have to get out of the building to being pushed over. Never brought out, I mean, except for a flashlight, I didn't bring out what we weren't even trying to get. Let's go for an EVP. We were hearing voices, we were hearing footsteps and people getting knocked over. It was, it was a crazy, crazy night. We were there for only two hours also. And so, I mean, I know for us, when we walked out, we're like, we got to come back into this place and see if we can get in here all night. But it was, it was pretty scary. It was uh, intense, for sure. Yeah, it was, it was basically a night for personal experiences more than collecting evidence for us, I think. Um, just the people around us all hearing things, feeling things, seeing things. Uh, 
was so overwhelming. I mean, you really didn't have a, an opportunity to do a straight line EVP session or, um, you know, even like breaking out the meters and stuff. I mean, it was all around you and affecting everybody instead of the equipment. And that's kind of what you want in a situation like this. Well, also, Wes, don't turn it back on me. No, turn it back on the... <laughs> that's the way TV works. I don't know. Well, there was also um, a couple of kids on this ghost hunt. And so um, they, it was their first ghost hunt. And um, one of them, I guess, communicated with like a child ghost. It was, it was really interesting. Like there were some things that happened that were... Nothing I've ever seen. My first ghost hunt, my second, I've done a lot of things, but this is my second ghost hunt, um, was at the Carnegie Center with Patty and some other folks, ghost hunt weekends, um, and, and ghost bugs and other people. But this was, people were really affected by this. There were like multiple, like eight or nine people that really uh, felt things there. That I work with every day, and I just kind of like brush off. But what's funny is, is that uh, hey guys, you should tell the story about when, when I toured you before to give you the layout, and one of my clients told you where the ghosts hid. Ghosts hid. Where they hid. Hid. Remember? Where the ghosts hid. Do you remember that? Yeah. The, 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 the one guy toured you through there and said, "Well, that's what they say." And pointed and. Oh, that slipped in my mind. Was it that guy, John? Yes. The guy? Yeah. Yeah. And um, you're like, well, they're always right there. And they talk. One of you all said that to me on the side note. He talked. He, he, he told us so much stuff. I can't. I can't remember <laughs> that one. He was a sweetheart. He was a sweetheart, but he was. He was on a go the whole time we were there. But it was great. He was excited. Yeah, he told us a lot of stuff, so it's hard to compute everything. <laughs> well, one of you all told me that he said, and that's, that's where those other people are, always are, and the, the, and one of you came out to me and was like, yeah, that's a weird thing he said. And then that's where all the activity was when we did this hunt. Maybe it was one of the ghost hunt weekends, guys. It had no chat. It was only 3D, but anyway. There was a few things that um, that happened that night that happened around the areas that they always happen at work. Um, that people dismiss their papers being shoveled and different things. So it was interesting. Well, you said uh, that following Monday when you went back to work. Oh, it was hell. It was hell <laughs> for like three days. <laughs> and was it stuff that, uh, like physically, like it was that night? Um, it was a lot of disruption that was different with people's behaviors. Um, oh, gosh. Um, but yeah, it was, um, there was, there was a lot of stuff that was different with people's behaviors, um, the next few days. Now, whether it was just a Monday, you know, could just be a Monday. There were some very strange things that happened um, the days after the hunt. Of course, on the flip side of paranormal, um, when that the guys came through, um, it was it was the big celebrity moment. They were all like, "We need autographs." I had to go to my computer and like print off on paper some pictures, and so the guys are all like autographing. <laughs> They're like, "You see them on TV?" Oh my gosh! And like, so I'm like, "Okay, all right. Well, here they're gonna be here in an hour. Like, here's here's a piece of paper." They were very excited. They're coming to Scarefest because of the race. So. Oh, right on. Nice. We can't wait to see those guys. That and uh, we, we can put that on the list more. on our Facebook page, that building. Yes. For, for locations for the new show. That would be very cool. Well, gosh, do it. I mean, uh, there, there you go. They'll be, they'll be camped out in your parking lot there now for the next... <laughs> Ten months, everybody. We out there. We have all the homeless in Lexington on occasion, like just camping out back there. They know it's Damon Street. <laughs> okay, we gotta get to our our half hour mark commercial break. Uh, everybody, you're watching Scarface Radio. When we come back, 
we will come. We'll come up with some kind of hashtag for Twitter to uh, to um, uh, <laughs> give you all a chance to win Paulding Old Paulding Jail uh, tickets with Ghost Hunt Weekends, and we will have our second celebrity announcement. We'll be right back. Coyote Chris Sutton. Shamanism. Spiritual advisement. Paranormal investigations. Inspirational presentations. Bringing light to the darkest places for over 20 years. Go to coyotechris.com to learn more. Welcome back to Scarefest Radio, and um, just a technical point: screaming "Are we muted?" is probably it's probably easier just to, to go about your business. <laughs> I'm just gonna say <laughs> um, we actually did. Uh, uh, I think we got the radio muted. What? Okay, what's going on, everybody? We're doing fine on the TV side of things. The video feeds. Yes, I have full control over everything. But the radio is a completely different switchboard that works a little differently, and so um, yeah, that's the way it works. Now, celebrity announcement. We are going to do a celebrity announcement. I've got her IMDb page pulled up. I gave everybody a hint like two weeks ago, week ago, whatever. I don't know, two weeks ago, I think it was. Ms. Tiffany Shepes. Tiffany Shepes. Um, she was in a, a, um, a Exit to Hell. That's uh, that's uh, of course the one that um, uh, we're having. We're having an Exit to Hell reunion this year. Kane Hodder, Tiffany, um, Robert, uh, uh, yeah, Con Conrad, yeah. I can't get the name right here. Um, anyway, so and we've we, it's it's an incredible thing. Okay, now. Uh, also, of course, uh, she was in this bunch of horror movies. Uh, Victor Crawley. She did a spot on 12 Monkeys on Sci-Fi. So um, I'm just not even going to go through her IMDb page for you. Excellent actress. Excellent get for the Scarefest. But Exit to Hell reunion coming back. Now, um, another thing we want to get to here. Now, we, we got some business to take care of. So, um, everybody... There is some stuff on sale now at thescarefest.com that has not been widely publicized, so we're going to do it now on Scarefest Radio. First things first, Tobin Bell Fast Pass. Now, this is an autograph. You get a, to take a selfie combo with him. This is not a photo op, not a photo op, selfie combo. 
uh, and line skip privileges. Now, here's the thing. I know what you're thinking. Ooh, boy, line skip. Your tickets are being sold Saturday or Sunday. You have you actually have to sign up for a day. So um, once that way we can limit the sales per day and not have everybody try to show up at one time. So that's how we've got that. And they are this year they are watching the quantities very closely per day. So but we've got the uh, Tobin Bell line pass. Now, if you want the Tobin Bell photo op, you got to do that. Now Nicole, he's doing that all 3 days, correct? Um, I mean, I believe so. Okay. Well, that that's that's what it said on the website. The line skip or the photo op? The photo op. We're on photo op now. I'm afraid to say yes because Brandon didn't tell me. Well, anyway, you need to research these things because it's on your website that you own, thescarefest.com. Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that's what the ticket says. So if anybody buys one right now, uh, he's going to be doing photo ops because that's what the tickets say. Um, but uh, I thought that was unusual to have it all three days. But uh, Tobin Bell photo ops are now on sale. Another photo op on sale, if I can get it to pull up here. Cassandra Peterson. Now, of course, you know where is Elvira, but she will not. To be perfectly clear, she is not doing the photo ops this time around as Elvira. Cassandra Peterson is doing her photo ops one day only, Saturday. Uh, so uh, get to thescarefest.com, click the uh, buy passes link, or click the picture of the photo op that's on the celebrity page. But anyway, if you get to the uh, 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 Grotex uh, page that's where everything's for sale and finally one more item we have Kim Russo is doing two count them two gallery events exclusive psychic medium gallery events Saturday at 2 30 p.m. Sunday at 9 at that at noon um, I can't even read my, my own notes here Sunday at noon um, so uh, VIP ticket holders do get first access and uh, front of the house seating but uh, those tickets have gone on sale at thescarefest.com. So we got that going on. Now, um, the other thing we need to talk about real quick, uh, I don't have a pretty graphic for this, so you'll just have to stare at me. The uh, gold and platinum ticket sales. Platinums are like almost gone. So if you were considering getting a platinum ticket, um, Layla's notes here says that um, there. She, well, she didn't give me a number, but anyway. So the platinum tickets, in particular, if you're thinking of going that route to get the the hotel room and the whole shebang, that's the way to go. Get them. Go ahead and get them because they are they are selling out. Uh, gold. Uh, she didn't give me a quantity on gold either, but um, they also uh, on, on platinum and golden. Um, we have a new uh, member of Scarecast this year. And uh, she is a full-time hire to work here while you're long. She has great connections. So this year, the platinum and golden bags are really nice. And also... Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. We're ready to... We've gotten great sponsorships this year. Many great sponsorships. More than any other year. And so um, we also are going to be offering the platinums some extra things um, right from the show to buy. If they're, they're low cost uh, for their friends. So there you go. Um, the swag bags is what she's talking about. The VIP swag bags, they are off the chart this year. They're, they're, they're actually, it's actually in a nice bag this year. Not only are the goodies nice, and we've had the t-shirts uh, uh, po designs posted on, on the Facebook group, but this year, the actual bag that it, how often can you actually get something where you say, wow, the bag that it comes in is swell. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we, um, okay, now, that's what I'm working on right now. My producer's saying, get to the Wraith tickets. Get to the Wraith tickets. Now, we are going to get to the Wraith tickets. And I think that... A good hashtag to, I'm going to let you all tell them what they get, but, and then I'll give the hashtag. We'll do it that way. Uh, switch switch the camera over to them. Tell them what they're winning, boys. They're winning uh, the entire free evening, September 8th, Old Falling Jail. You get uh, 
everything the whole day you get the meet and greet the hang out we always have food and good times q a and then we go hunt uh jail and chad was telling me today there is an added location i don't know if i'm allowed to say it, so i'm not going to say it but it's going to be to jail with a secondary location so we're going to be there all night usually till 2 a.m so you get a free pass and whatever you decide for the hashtag and then we'll pick a winner from there okay um now where is old old, old paulding jail paulding ohio paulding ohio i don't want somebody from california win it and say it all can't go no okay <laughs> paulding ohio so that's uh you you gotta get yourself there is what is all i'm pointing i'm pointing out the rest of it okay. on the house now well I, they're not gonna give you a hotel room either so sleep in your freaking car uh the hashtag on twitter <laughs> You can tag me. You can tag the Scareface. You can tag um, anybody from Tennessee. It doesn't matter. You don't even have to tag anybody because the hashtag is hashtag TWC tickets. TWC tickets. That stands for Tennessee Race Wraith Chasers, if you didn't know. TWC tickets all squished together in one hashtag. And, we're the, and I said it was a good one because that's the first time I've ever used a hashtag, I think, that nobody else had ever used and i've used some weird hashtags so i <laughs> so um so th th that's a uh, so, oh boy um if she can see or no she yeah she sees what yeah the yeah she's supposed to now she can't now she's gone now she's gone me oh they're broken brandon it's gonna get Get to sleep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> move the mouse. Move the mouse. Move the mouse. Anyway. The computer's not in front of me. He put it on the other side of the table. Move okay. the foot pedal. <laughs> the squirrel. Poke the squirrel. Poke the squirrel. Okay, everybody. Um, now, I actually did have something else here in my notes, but this has been such an interesting evening. Oh, I know what it is. I just wanted to tell you, gentlemen. That had I not been paying attention, when it was I think it was uh, Chris's birthday, Mike sent the most posted out the most incredible picture of the two of you, that um, that I just wanted to share with everybody right now. That uh, <laughs> I I want you to know that would have in fact been tonight's show banner if I had seen that. It would have been none of that macho men's medium T-shirt shit. It would have been that picture right there. Uh, that, that, was, yeah, that, <laughs> that was just a random Friday night. No, that, hanging out. That's totally normal, bro. That's the way we go to clubs every Saturday well, night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's wrong. I know, I know some clubs like that. I know some clubs like that. Um, you know what? Yeah, well. We're in a village people cover band. <laughs> so uh, everybody, I'm still looking for a winner on twi on the Twitter on the Twitter. If somebody posts the hashtag hashtag TWC tickets, you will win. We will get the, your information, and we will um, you will win. Tickets to the Paulding, uh, Paulding investigation, the ghost sponsored by Ghost Hunt Weekends. So, um, still looking for that. Um, Did now, win the pass? what's the matter? Did someone win the three day pass? I Brandon told me you all were selling enough tickets to quit worrying about the three day pass when we had a show like tonight, um, where okay. everything is so confusing. So, now, this was a request that I got on Facebook. We need to give a birthday shout out to Alexa. Alexa is apparently a big fan of the gentleman, and um, it was her birthday last Friday. And um, so, there, I mean, she might be a stalker, I don't know, but she posted it on me, so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, Alexa, happy birthday. Say happy birthday, gentlemen. Happy birthday, happy birthday Alexa. Alexa. Woo! Now, <laughs> now, our question from Alexa. Which I thought was, is the White House? I'm gonna I'm gonna rephrase it for you, Alexa, to make it a, the White House. Would you all? Is it? Does that seem like a place that you gentlemen would actually like to investigate if you could? Oh heck no! Oh my! I God, didn't ask absolutely. you. 
I mean, if we could get permission to the White House, I mean, are you talking about, like, Tonight, if we could go, in there, like, <laughs> like for Scarface. Well, I'm, like, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Scarface. We'll have to book it. Yeah, put put uh, put Layla on that. Uh, I did. I, she, her question was, would you like to investigate the White House? That's um, is that something you even? It, I, I, I guess the question, the way she means it is, that's one of those places that are on a lot of people's wish list. You know, I know it'll never happen because it's like Graceland. I could see Graceland letting you in, though, because there's not, like, people with machine guns on the roof. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think, uh, yeah, I would love to investigate the White House. You know how much history? I mean, that's, like, that's like one of the creme de la creme. I don't think anybody even tries to investigate the White House. Um, if I could pick any room, I think I'd pick the Lincoln bedroom just to see. Oh, yeah, it's that's famous, yeah. 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 I mean, uh, obviously, as a paranormal investigator, that's a gold mine. So, yeah, absolutely. I would love to investigate the White House. Will we ever? I doubt it. But, you know, <laughs> we can dream. It's a one. How can we get the White House? Like, that's <laughs> what you're saying. Well, I think I've awesome. covered all my notes. So, anyway, so we got that out of the way. Um, oh, somebody actually won. Now i got to figure out who was. Uh, they all did it at one freaking time. Uh, let's see here. Let me see. Two minutes, one minute, 55 seconds. So the two minute would be... Okay. Now this is going to be a hard one for you. I'm going to give you... Uh, Y'all got something to write with because this person isn't using an actual name. Yep. It is Uberspeak. U-B-E-R-S-P-E-A-K is his name. At 2016 ASAP. Um... So this is apparently somebody that just likes to share stuff, but this time they actually won, tried to win. Um, if you if you can't get a hold of them for whatever reason, uh, I will make a note of the backup, and y'all can get in touch with me uh, because we do have a second place. Like I said, every, everybody tried it once, but um, that was the one that my computer says posted first, and that is okay. Uberspeak two thousands. That is at two thousand sixteen ASAP. So whoever you are, congratulations. Uh, we will get the gentleman in touch with you via Twitter. So I'm sure you are uh, better be following them, and they will try to uh, send you a message, and we'll get that taken care of. Um, that's not as sexy as having somebody's name, Uber speak. So um, maybe next time we need to make a rule that you have to have a name. But I didn't say that, so congratulations, Uber speak. Congratulations, Uber speak, 2016 ASAP. <laughs> Now, um, boy, this hour has flown by when you got nothing but commercials and announcements. Uh, we still got one more commercial break to go. I tell you what, um, I'm going to skip it because, um, and we'll, we'll, I'll fit them in next week. But what it is, everybody, we've got the sponsors. We're really, we appreciate. Y'all, <laughs> you do realize everybody can see you. It's going to blow us out of the water. It's great. Yeah, and and for the and I'm I'm trying to play the ones that. Well, I mean, they threw cash at us. What the what the hell can you do? Now, the ones that, you know, give you a coupon for 10 hamburgers, no. But, uh, but these sponsors are really coming through for us this year and making, if they're not, uh, I mean, so, some of the deals that have been shared with me that I can't wait to share on the air, there's one in particular that I'm hoping, I'll put it this way, I'm hoping that whatever doesn't get used, uh, I get to take take home with me. I'll just I'll just say that. Uh, it's a brand it's a brand new car. No, it's not a car. It's a, in my case, it's even more fun. Um, well, it's bourbon. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, gentlemen. Uh, now I do I do need to do my third celebrity announcement though. We can't skip that. I promise the people they would have a celebrity announcement, so we have to have that. So we're pulling up the announcement page here. Our next one. Now this is Robert Hall. Robert Hall. Now the name might not ring a bell right over right right immediately, but he directed Fear Clinic, but he's best known for his work in the horror makeup industry. He is like one of the go-to guys. Um, his studio is called Almost Human. Um, for the last 16 years, he has become one of the most popular and prolific special effects makeup artists in Hollywood. <clears throat> I, I mean, if you go to his IMDb page, I mean, he has worked on The Terminator, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, The Sarah Connor Chronicles, 
uh, he is. What was that damn TV show where they did makeup? Uh, <laughs> we face had some off. face off. Right. We had some of the people. This here, here you go, Bear. He was asking for face. This is the real deal. This is not somebody trying to win a contest. This is the real deal, people. This is uh, the real deal, Robert. And it's like Robert Greenhall. And the reason he sometimes uses Robert Greenhall because there's another Robert Hall in the film industry and it confuses IMDb. But that is the dude that's coming. So I want to uh, get that out there. Too. What was that? Oh, on IMDb? IMDb what? Yeah, there's a couple of your names that do multiple what? things. Okay, yeah, their uh, IMDb pay. It has a whole lot of people. It has a whole lot of people, and they do a whole lot of stuff. Yeah, I we got good announcements tonight. Um, I'll put it this way: just like Robert. Now I don't know Robert because I don't I don't sit through the movie at the end to see who did the makeup. But I know these horror fans, Wraith Chasers. I'm gonna tell you these horror. If Paranormal had fans. Like these horror fans, you would have to every convention. You gentlemen would have to sit there and listen to people quote you every episode, every word that came out of your mouth while you were on your hunts. They could tell you, and and they would ask you, why did you choose to stand that way instead of facing the mirror? I mean, you'd be surprised, but I mean, <laughs> we love it. I mean, one of the best parts about Scarefest or any convention for that matter, is we love to communicate with people who watch the show. We don't even call them fans, really. We call them friends. Uh, you know, these are people who are diehard. They like to watch the show. They love horror. They love paranormal. And, I mean, just sitting down and hearing their experiences or, you know, conversing with them about something that they've, you know, really attached to about the show or, you know, something that they've had happen in their life. I mean, that's what these cons are all about, in my opinion. You know, just getting to communicate and uh, connect with people on that type of level. Uh, I mean, it's so much fun. You know, you just you stand there for like 12 hours, but it goes by so fast because all the different types of people that come up and and want to share their stories. So we well, love. I, it. I, under, I understand you wanting the the uh, because you are your country boys like me. Uh, every now and then somebody wants to call me a celebrity and I said no I'm a personality that's the most you can get out of me but with you gentlemen I can tell you 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 might as well embrace the fan thing because I understand you call them friends but I've watched some of the, uh, the Twitter post and the uh, the Facebook chatter you guys are like a set of mud tires and a lift kit from being the sexiest things going in the south right now and you damn well know it no, 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 no. And I mean, and even if it were that, if, even if we're, if that were so, I mean, we wouldn't uh, see it that way. Uh, I think, you know, the, the, most, the most important thing is to always be humble and kind and to just, you know, see everybody as equal and everybody, you know, we're just blessed to be able to do what we love to do and share it with the world. So that's kind of the way we like to see it. And uh, now one more question I have, and now this doesn't actually pertain to you all, but my good friend Porter. Tell me the truth. Does he actually ever work on a farm, or does he just drive around and wait to see somebody's <laughs> tractor and take a selfie with it? Uh, no, he actually does. It's, uh, I guess he would call, um, uh, is it his dad's farm? I mean, it's their land, but no, he actually, the pictures he posts are for real. I mean, he's okay. driving a tractor, bailing the hay, and he does the whole nine, so I, it's the real you know, He's a cowboy. I just pictured him driving around eastern Tennessee going, hey, there's a new tractor. Pull over. And, uh, <laughs> take a picture. Of it. <laughs> take... I can't see myself. Anita and Wes actually bring me vegetables and corn and all these <laughs> and cattle. You all can't see this, but. My. Okay. My fr Nicole and Eve. Okay, everybody. Now, one thing I did, I opened my Instagram account. And I did not have an Instagram account. I decided to open open an Instagram account. My first official Instagram picture, other than the profile picture, was of a cow. So there, there are my that's my street cred. That is my street cred. Is uh, I Instagrammed my cow. Uh, yeah, my street cred, and they bring us all kinds of wonderful things. And and he wrestles cows to the ground, and I some pictures that too. So ba baby yeah. cows, baby cows, and then cows. he just saves ba all the baby, baby cows. In the world. All the ducks and kittens and yeah. baby cows. 
Yeah, but now I also want to point out. Now I do grab them when they're a day old and, and tag them and stuff like that. But when once I get a couple of days on them, I got two nephews that don't have the back problems that I do. They can <laughs> tackle the cows. Um, so anyway, now that we've had farm talk, uh, I don't even know what that means. Uh, <laughs> Nina's telling me. Oh, okay. Oh, I understand the question now. Um, where are your next upcoming? That's what the commercials for. Did you all see that nifty commercial that I played? Yes, yes. So the uh, flyers for some <laughs> promo for upcoming events. And it yes. it has it has music too, but y'all couldn't hear the music. Um, where what is y'all's next appearance? Actually, uh, tomorrow we're going to be right here in Gallatin at Rosemont. Uh, that sold out, but um, well, we got falling. That, that one, what is that again? September 8th. Let me see what else we got coming on. Lake Shawnee. There's a couple tickets left for Lake Shawnee. That's August 11th. And it's going to be us with Steve and Tango. And there's only a few tickets left, so you can hit that one up. Uh, we're at Rolling Hills Asylum up in New York on the 18th. Uh, Chris and I and Porter will be at my Paracon, Michigan Paracon. The week after that, yeah, that's uh, that's going to be a big one. I'm really excited for the Michigan Paracon. Uh, there's a lot. I mean, pretty much everybody in the biz is going to be there, and uh, we're super excited to just be a part of it. Uh, yeah, but also, I got to throw in one thing about Michigan Paracon. Because of where they have it, Michigan Paracon. Do you realize that if we have a plane crash, that the entire paranormal industry is wiped out at once? Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, Michigan Paragon has been canceled for us. <laughs> well, no, that's good. Just say whoever's not going, who's in the industry, because they can hunt all of us. <laughs> there you, know, you go. There. Hey, and you'll have all those psychics out there that can like find your foot and um, that kind of thing. <laughs> Uh, that was an uh, evil thing to say, but the la I've, I've I've seen selfies taken on the plane, and it'll be like Dustin Perry taking a selfie of John Zappa sitting behind him, Amy Allen a row behind that. And I'm thinking, good <laughs> lord, Destination America would go down the tubes if this happens. Uh, we'll be we'll be holding up a cheers in the very back row where the where the wheels are, because that's where we usually are. We can't hear anything right beside the bathroom in the plane. <laughs> All right. No, while we're on topic, uh, are you are you gentlemen good flyers or nervous flyers? Um, well, you know, I don't mind flying. As as a matter of fact, I would rather fly for a couple hours than drive for ten hours. Um, but it's not my favorite thing to do. Um, you know, I've kind of gotten used to it because we've flown literally so many times over the past four or five years. Um, but you know, I, I'm still nervous about it. Uh, it, like I said, it's not my favorite thing to do, but it is better than being in a car with four idiots for 10 hours on the road. <laughs> I'll take it over the drive. It's off topic me. What's that? What does off topic mean, Wes? <laughs> well, if you want me to plug my other show. I'm not <laughs> show. Um, everybody, what Nicole is referring to, I, I have another show on the Viddy dot space network called Gone Off Topic. And off topic is what we talk about. Topics that I consider off. So it's gone off topic on the Viddy Space Network. Thank you for me allowing me a plug, which I try to almost never do on Scarefest Radio. Although I plug the crap out of Scarefest on that show for the record. Um so uh, we're at the end of the show. With the, we've, we've kept the gentleman uh, long enough. Make sure you tell Chad that I made that cool commercial for him. Because well, I thought it was beautiful, my friend. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was very well done. Uh, even though I couldn't hear the music, I feel like you picked the right score. Um, and I, <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to hear it myself, you know. Also, yeah. one thing that Mike forgot, next weekend we'll be in Oklahoma at the Oklahoma Paracon. Uh, so anybody up there, make sure to come by, check us out. We'll be there, to, or we'll be square. Sounds good, everybody. This uh, has been. Oh, t-shirts. They're too big, though. They're too big. I know. We need new ones. Yes. You are special. You are. <laughs> Do you know somebody where we can get some? I'll, I'll, always for free for you. I'll, 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 uh -huh. I'll, 
I'll bet you she gives you the ones that cost her a buck and a half less, though. Yeah, we need some schmedium. Well, this year, we have a 15 screen print for one of our shirts. Ooh, 15 screens. That's a lot of color right there. Yeah, it is. Yes, one of the designs by Joel Robinson, who is amazing, everyone is asking for it. They're asking for it like crazy on t-shirts. It's a VIP like shirt. So we're finding ways to like give it to them, but it's 15 spring shirts. No, tell them, tell them to buy their damn tickets. Tell them. We Go. do. Platinum. But we just, I mean, our, our volunteers, our, everybody wants that shirt. So like if they could buy the shirt. Tell them to buy their tickets. Everybody, this has been Scarefest Radio. Special thanks to uh, Chris Smith and Mike Goncalves for putting up with this stuff tonight. Uh, hope you enjoyed Nicole's uh, uh, whatever the hell she did tonight. And uh, <laughs> and everybody, the Scarefest, thescarefest.com. Go get your uh, tickets. Go get your uh, uh, fast pass. Get your photo ops. Time is running out. <laughs> I can't believe you need to be coming in.